What is the role of technology in language teaching uh, now in 2008? I mean, I think one of the one of the big issues we've had is separating teaching and technology up till now, and perhaps that's a false separation. So, I mean. Its role is everywhere in teaching. All teachers are using email in, to, to some extent. Most teachers are members of some kind of mailing list or community. We've got everyone looks at their own websites and occasionally they find something to take into the classroom. So in that respect, I guess some of it's been demystified. But the, the issue still is that perhaps most teachers know the basic tools, but we're not getting beyond that. Um, but obviously. I, you know, technology gives us access to other people and other materials, and I guess those are the two. What kind things. of technology are you talking about here? I mean, what, even something as simple as, as web access at least gives us, a, you know, a window onto the wider world, which a lot of us don't have. You know, I mean, if we're if we're working in in a particular city or a particular country, we may not get out of that city or country that often, um, and the media we engage with in term, in that country might just be very specific. So that country, so you know, access to websites and mailing lists and things give us access to other people's opinions and other, you know, other materials. And I guess for me that's one of the important things. It's widening our, widening our little teachers community that we might have in our school, for example, to something much, potentially much bigger. What's the most? Uh, this is a different. Way. What's the most successful use of modern technology in, in education that you know of? <laughs> um, the most successful use of modern technology. Or the one that you would most like other, other teachers to embrace, I guess. That may be um, I think the one thing that I would like to see most people doing would be joining communities. I mean, I think the big thing about technology, as I said before, is this open access and, and joining with other people. And what, what a lot of people are missing out on, I think, by not using technology largely, is this contact with other people and this bouncing of ideas. Um, different perspectives, that kind of thing. And so, you know, I mean, to use technology successfully in your teaching, I don't think you have to be an expert in Web 2 technologies or know how to set up a wiki. If you can use email and join a teacher development mailing list, then that for me would be, you know, the most successful use of technology for most teachers. Access to new ideas and new ways of thinking. And what about the teacher and the students working together? Um, it's, Tricky ones, I guess it depends on the age of students you're working with. I mean, the, our problem with technology, um, apart from the fact that a lot of teachers don't actually understand it very well, the other issue is that the technologies we might want our students to engage with are not the ones that they engage with. And they might be engaging with Wii's and uh, Playstations and things like that. And they're probably more used to one of two things, either playing games, which are very exciting, very fast paced, or community communication, so using things like Facebook and Messenger with their friends and things like that. Uh, what we might be doing in this very basic form, I guess, is um, asking them to interact with a web page, get some information out, work with that information, reformulate it or whatever. Uh, the, the big trick for us now, I think, is to take the technologies that they're actively working with. So you take Facebook, and make something educational out of Facebook. They know how it works, they love how it works, so how do we exploit that kind of thing? Is there anything special about, about I mean, one of the most uh, popular or the most heavily promoted kinds of technology at the moment is, are things like interactive whiteboards and various digital ways of offering audio and video. Is, is that, is that a, a, a positive development in your, in your view? I think, you know, one thing I have to accept is that the, Today, I mean, anybody under 30, I guess, the Generation Z is more used to visual or hour media. I mean, they're used to listening to things or hearing things, and generally in very short chunks as well, than they are working with text in any, in any form, really, apart from maybe blogs. Um, and so media, I think media are very, very important. We need to make more use of video, we need to make more use of audio and that kind of thing. In terms of whiteboards, I mean, uh, I'm in two minds, as, as most people will probably know about whiteboards. I think they're potentially fantastic tools. Um, one of the great advantages they have over any other technology is that they're an instantly recognisable design. They're a board on the wall that you can write on. Um, and I've seen some very creative uses of them. I've also seen lots of people using them as whiteboards or as 
projectors for a web page or something. But obviously the big thing again, we've got uh, financial considerations um, and training considerations. Lots of places have installed whiteboards and spent all the money on the hardware and nothing on the teacher training. Um, although it is a recognisable metaphor, I guess, um, it still needs some training. So, I, I mean, I think they have great potential, but um, I think it's going to be a long time before uh, they're as, you know, as available or ubiquitous as pens and pencils. You, know. you mentioned the word training. What, what, how, do we, how do you train teachers to become um, happy users, comfortable users of technology? And I'm thinking specifically of, of things like perhaps whiteboards or just using PowerPoint for teaching or using the latest audio players or whatever, or data projectors. How do you get teachers happy with all that? I, mean, I think training, training is key and, and it's the one, the, the real place where we let everyone down in the last few years. Mm. Um, there are all sorts of reasons for that that perhaps we don't need to go into. I mean, uh, it's sort of the, the people generally in charge of lots of teaching centres are of an age perhaps where technology wasn't that important to them. And uh, so they don't tend to cascade that, the, the enthusiasm for it. Um, we don't see much training in official training programs, things like the CELTA and, and the Trinity certificates. Uh, there's very little attention paid to technology. In most schools that I've visited in and worked, technology is very much an afterthought in training. Um, and until we, until we integrate training into teacher training, I mean technology training into teacher training, then we're still going to have this problem because everyone Someone who does a four-week preparatory course goes into the classroom with a, a vague comfort level of perhaps presenting a new language point or presenting some vocabulary or something, but no one's ever talked to them about technology. And if they have, it's always been on a technical level, so you can look at this web page, but not how to exploit it from a pedagogical viewpoint. So I think, I mean, my, as you know, this is one of my areas, teacher training, and I think it's hugely important. And I think... Personally, um, although it's, it's largely ignored, I think we're actually being quite almost offensive in the way we treat our, our learners. In that we, we don't train our teachers to recognise the learner's preference for various media, media, and we don't train the teachers how to use it. So, I mean, for me, training is key. It doesn't matter if you can have all the technology in the world in your language school or your, or your school, but if nobody's helped you towards... Um, towards using it properly, efficiently and effectively, then, you know, it's a waste of money. Last question. You're the Minister of Education. You've got an unlimited budget. How much, what sort of percentage of your budget do you spend on the technology? Um, to be honest, I think it's not really a question of how much money, because, you know, I mean, the, 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 the big mistake lots and lots of ministers for education have made, I guess, is, is in the past is in building computer rooms and things like that, you know, buying 30 computers, putting them in a room um, and um, ho hoping that the people are going to go along and use it. In certain forward-thinking places, and here in Barcelona where I am, um, there's a move towards putting one computer connected to the internet with a data projector in every classroom. And that strikes me as a very good use of money, so I, I guess I'd probably be looking at doing that. Um, how much of a percentage? Uh, I'd say a large percentage. Um, we're, we're dealing with younger generations who are used to working with that media. We need to inspire them. We need to we need to kind of uh, engage them on the, the digital native level. Um, and so I would spend quite a bit on technology, but I would spend double whatever I spent on technology on training the teachers how to use it properly. Why you, you're a technophile? Um, Question. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, I, when, when, my, when my laptop died two weeks ago, I, I became someone who was quite disgruntled with technology very, very quickly. Um, I, I see its value. I use, I use computers every day, and they've introduced me to a fantastic career and an awful lot of interesting people around the world who I probably will never meet, but are very close friends and, and close colleagues. So I see its value. Uh, but, but equally, I, I, I quite like going outside and, and having a wander in the mountains. So I think, you know, computers are great, technology is great, data projectors are fantastic, uh, but so are books. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's all about balance.